physical body. It's journeys. You are navigating pathways. Ah. My journeys must continue. <laughs> I cannot be hindered. Because the spirit that I have is energized by God himself. I travel. I travel even in my unconscious state. There is an aspect of my reality that you cannot captivate. You cannot, you cannot put me in prison and expect that you have, you have cut me off. Paul says that the word of God upon my lips cannot be bound. Our journeys must continue in the spirit. I came by prayer. was designed hallelujah the way it was designed was that we will be able to find the courage to pray when we are broke to pray when we are sick to pray when we lose our jobs to pray when we are imprisoned that there should be no human situation strong enough to stop us from the art of prayer because that's who we are. And if, if, even if you are thrown into prison, there is a ventilation that you will find in the midst of your confinement that will make it a paradise. You can change the weather. Oh my God. Whenever you find a man depressed, speaking out of a heart that is defeated, he lost his scepter. It's a sign that he's fainting. When you hear faithless words, words of defeat and surrender, it's a proof that the man has not been around the fires of prayer. He's not a proper man. Don't listen to him. What he's saying is, it strengthens the will of the devil. He bowed. That's where those letters you read, that's where it came from. He was into words. And those words are burning flames today and forever. Our generation needs to exploit this well afresh. At a time where Satan and witchcraft is going on rampage among all nations, we need a comeback. A comeback of spiritual technology after the order of the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. You can break free. You can enlarge. Yes. You can enlarge. In the midst of hatred, in the midst of jealousy, in the midst of backbiting, you can, you can break through. I saw a pastor packed his bags and he said he was leaving his calling because of backbiting. I say you are a kindergarten pastor. You didn't finish school. Hallelujah. You did not finish. And nothing can overcome a man that prays. Lord, as we gain ascendancy during the course of the proceedings of this conference, Cause that one sitting by the well of despair to know that there's a hole in his armor so that he might run to the water brooks 
and drink to the full. Such drink that is drink indeed, that he might find strength. Now I in a man. Woo! Do great things and take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Somebody Jesus. How many of you know? Hallelujah. How many of you know you need power? Power. So, yeah, you need power. I know you read books about temperament and how to blend temperament, destiny. This arrangement is evidence enough that you cannot fulfill it with the strength of the flesh is to reveal your weakness and your insufficiencies so that you will stay in the place of prayer and receive grace to fulfill God's will in representing him in the life of your wife and in the life of your husband. Can we bless them? There are great examples in the body of Christ and we strengthen them in their marriages. That the God of heaven will look kindly and give them the grace to persevere and to continue and to be steadfast. Can you release a blessing upon them? Glory to your name. Release a blessing upon them. Your life will fulfill the prophecy. The prophecy of the mystical union concerning Christ and his church. And all the symptoms of that mystical union will be manifested in your experience. We give you praise. We give you glory. As we bless this couple with grace with strength to carry on. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Celebrate them as they go back to their seats. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Now, I have one hour, 15 minutes. I will talk for 40 minutes. Then we will set aside uh, like um, 25 minutes. Because if we are talking prayer, we need to bring evidences that God can answer prayer. So we'll go to the practical session in, in about 30 minutes. Hallelujah. I'm a student of the Bible, and I have studied the Bible a little. And in my study of the Bible, I found out that prayer is who we are and not what we do. And because it is who we are, I wanted to find out the essentials of sustaining or building a life of prayer, essentials. Our emphasis this time is not prayer as a ministry for the church, but prayer in the lives of individuals. Because we have a problem. And the problem is that the average believer does not understand what prayer is. So we ins install us on the motherboard of spiritual experiences through prayer. Are you still with me? So we are looking at the essentials of prayer. I will show you, there are seven of them, but we'll, I will show you two of them. You study five. 
yourself. Hebrews chapter 5, beginning from verse number 7. You join me in the next 10 minutes with strings. Look for the strings now. Look for it. Because we are going on a journey. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7. This is one of the snapshots in the scriptures that reveal the practice of Jesus' prayer life. There are a few snapshots in the Bible, and we're going to consult with each snapshot so that we'll see, we'll have an idea of how the Lord himself engaged in the act of prayer. Okay, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says, who implication with strong crying and tears unto him who was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. He was not heard because he made effort. He was heard because the prayer was also carried in his soul. He feared. Now, if you check this snapshot, you realize that prayer is supposed to be an activity that captures the powers of your entire being. The issue with many prayer warriors is that they do not know how to give themselves. You know, are you still with me? This man was caught up in this experience his soul was there. His emotion was there. The Bible says he was caught up with strong tears. And there is a sense of his helplessness that is pictured in this scripture. A helplessness because the Bible says that he was praying unto him that was able to save what? Him from death. The one he was praying to seemed to have an ability. Are you there? The one he was conferring with seems to have an ability. And he wanted him to exercise that his ability on his behalf. And that was the reason why his prayer was achieved with strong crying, with tears, and with fear. His entire being was taken up in this adventure. So the first limitation I find in the prayer experience of the average believer is his inability to give himself. I know you pray for long, and that's good. And we are going to talk about persistent prayer. The prayer of knocking at the door. Because some of you cannot knock beyond three days. And there are some things that were born and formed from a station period. In order for there to be equilibrium, you will need to know how to knock for 28 months to turn the tide of that situation that passed through the gestation period of 28 months. So there's a knocking dimension. There's a persistent dimension. We have not gotten there yet because when we get there, we will now need to read the meter of your prayer life, and find out the extent of your staying power. Most of us don't stay long enough to get results. So, but that's not where I am. This first point is the ability to give your entire members to the engine called prayer, the protocol of prayer, the spirit of prayer. Because we could see from this scripture that Jesus was totally engaged his emotion was there. 
there was a sense of inadequacy that propelled him. There was a consciousness of insufficiency that propelled him. There was a motivation in this equation. The motivation was a quiet fear. A quiet fear of the understanding of how helpless the situation was going to be if God does not respond. And because he did not want that his fear to come to pass, it was sufficient motivation to keep him in the process. His mind was in it. His spirit was in it. His soul was in it. His emotion was in it. And the Bible says that he cried with strong tears. This was not a man that was trying to ensure that the alignment of his lipstick was not affected by the adventure. He lost his decorum. I know most of you, you look for very articulate words in the archives of your mind. And you say, oh God, our King, omnipotent, luminous one in the galaxies of eternity. You are not praying. You are in limbo. <laughs> Everything was in it. You know, as a married man, if me and my wife, if me and my wife have a, a misunderstanding, and I come and hold her hand like this, I know that it's not the, I'm only holding 30% of the hand. There's, <laughs> she has not given me 60%. The average believer doesn't know how to give himself to the spirit of prayer. There is a personality that walks prayer from your human spirit because you do not have the energy to communicate enough for it to make an impression in the courts of heaven. So the prayer protocol, the prayer process is driven by the spirit of prayer. But you see, it's what you give the spirit of prayer that he works with. If all you give the spirit of prayer is your physical body, then the spirit of prayer will only be able to energize your physical body. If what you give to is your mind, then that's the tool that the spirit of prayer has to orchestrate its ministry of bringing your voice before the throne of grace. In the scripture we read in the book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, Jesus' body, Jesus' spirit, Jesus' soul was fully immersed in the act of prayer. Are you still with me? I don't know. There's an example I want to give, but... It's not a church example. That's the problem. My first lesson is to teach us how to give your soul. How do you give your spirit? How do you allow yourself to be overtaken by the spirit of prayer? Because for many of us in this room, you have never experienced that intercourse with God where God sweeps you off and you're no longer in charge. And then he, he releases you from detention three hours later. Many of us here have never experienced that. Not because you are not powerful enough. I've heard of your stories. 
But the problem is, you don't know how to give yourself to the spirit of prayer. Are you here? Prayer contains the total man. I had to go reading the hymns of the 18th century. Because in the, in the saints that wrote these hymns. So I got one. Must be that unable to collocate the parts of this entity called man and to submit such parts to the spirit of prayer so that he can work out the protocol of bringing you before the presence of God. If you pray this kind of prayer, you will feel God's response on every part you make available to God. You will feel it on your spirit. You will feel it on your physical body and you will feel it in your soul. How do you give yourself? The way to give yourself to prayer is to make what is on God's heart your goal. The moment your motivation for prayer is something that is self-centered, the river of prayer is not likely to overflow you. The moment what brought you to the prayer room is not in direct sync with what is on the heart of God, you have lost the opportunity to be overwhelmed by the spirit of prayer. I know that there are legitimate needs in your life and you want to talk to God about those needs. There's nothing wrong with that. But the reason why you're an intercessor is not to pray your prayers, but to pray God's prayers. So there's, there's a time for you to pray your prayers. But the reason why you pray every day and when, you, when your desire in your prayer adventure is to know what is on the heart of God, then the protocol of spiritual intercourse begins because God begins to share his heart with you. And for every strand of disclosure that God makes, he sucks you into himself. Until there is no loose end left. You might find yourself crying and your, your prayers are not in words that an onlooker can pick and know what you are praying about. That's the kind of prayer that Anna was praying and even the priest himself could not adequately judge the spiritual transaction that was taking place because it was intercourse. She felt it in her spirit. She felt it in her soul. God decided to show me mercy. So my day must begin with finding out why am I here? 